In this short video, which is part one of two, we're going to look at exponential growth and decay. Now, a fundamental characteristic of many natural phenomena, uh, such as uh, population growth, or maybe the spread of a communicable disease, or radioactive decay, uh, is that the amount uh, of the substance is directly proportional to the rate of change. So if y represents the amount that we have, then dy dt is a constant of proportionality times the amount that you have at that time t. So in the case of population, if you think about it, is that the larger the population, the faster it grows. The smaller the population, the slower it grows. Or for radioactive decay, the more radioactive substance you have, the faster it will decay, and vice versa. Now, this constant of proportionality is called the relative growth rate, even when it represents a decay. And so this equation is called the law of natural growth when k is positive and it represents growth. On the other hand, if k is negative, we call this equation the law of natural decay. So we'd like to solve this equation. Now, what does it mean to solve an equation where you have a derivative in it? This is called a differential equation. And this is a special type of differential equation, which is called a separable differential equation. Let's study these in a little bit more detail later course. And remember that the solution to a differential equation is going to be a function y, which it depends on t, where dy dt is some constant times y. To solve this, uh, we do a little informal manipulation with this dy dt. We really collect all of the terms that where y appears on one side everything else on the other side, and then we integrate each side. So I'm going to integrate dy over y with respect to y, integrate k dt with respect to t. Now the antiderivative of dy over y is the natural log of the absolute value of y, and the antiderivative of kt is kt, and then I need a constant of integration. Now, technically, I should get a constant of integration on each side. So I get the natural log of the absolute value of y plus c1 equals k2 plus c2. But if I subtract c1 from each side, and then I could just replace c2 minus c1 with a single constant c. It makes it cleaner. And since uh, the amount that we have is always going to be positive, I don't need the absolute value signs. So I could write that as natural log of y equals kt plus c. Now, if I write the equivalent exponential equation, that says y equals e to the kt plus c. Now, this is a fine solution, but it's not convenient for a lot of the problems we want to solve. So to make it more convenient, we can use a property of exponents and write e to the kt plus c as e to the power of c times e to the power of kt. Now c is a constant, e is a constant, so e to the power of c is a constant. So we'll just replace e to the power of lowercase c with an uppercase c. And so then I get y equals uppercase c e to the kt as my solution to this differential equation. Now c, the uppercase c, now represents the initial value. So that's a useful way of having the equation written then. It says that the amount left, the original amount, times e to the kt. And to see what we mean, 
uh, by the initial value, if I just put t equals zero into this equation, then I'll have y at time zero is c e to the k times zero. Well, that's just c times e to the zero power, and e to the zero power is one, so that just equals c. So here's an example where we have some population growth. So we're going to assume that this uh, natural growth model uh, applies here, and it does under reasonable conditions. So a culture has a population of 400 after two hours, a population of 25,600 after six hours. And we'd like to know what is the relative growth rate. And we're going to express that um, as a percentage rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent. And then we'd like to know when will the population reach 50,000. So our governing equation looks like this. I'm using p instead of y. So p after time t, t would be the number of hours, is some constant c times e to the kt. Now, I know the population after six hours, so I can write the equation 25,600 equals c e to the 6k. I also know the population after 400 or after two hours is 400. So I can write 400 equals c e to the 2k. So I just replace t with six in the top equation. t gets replaced with two in the bottom equation. Now here I have two equations and two unknowns. And so there's various ways I can go about solving this. But the, what I'm going to suggest is that we divide the top equation by the bottom equation, meaning that I'll divide the left-hand sides, I'll divide the right-hand sides, and I should get an equivalent equation. So 25,600 divided by 400 is 64. And if I take C e to the 6k divided by C e to the 2k, C is the original amount. So um, we're assuming that we have, it has to be positive. So I can divide C over C to get one. And then I'll just use properties of exponents. That'll be E to the 6K minus 2K or just E to the 4K. So my new equation no longer has the capital C. I just have 64 equals E to the 4K. And I can write the equivalent log equation 4k then equals natural log of 64. And k then would be the natural log of 64 over 4. That's my exact value. Now, it does ask for a, an approximation. So we'll go ahead and pull out our calculator. And we'll find that if I take the natural log of 64 and divide it by 4, I get about 1.0397. Changing that to a percent, I'll have to multiply by 100 and then round, that'll give me 104.0% rounded to one decimal place. All right. So whenever possible, when we're solving any of these types of problems, we really want to use exact values. And only if we're asked for an approximation at the very end, in the very last step, do we pull out the calculator. So to answer part B, again, you have some options. The way I'm going to go about it is to find the value for uh, the capital letter C. And to do that, again, I'm going to follow this advice. Whenever possible, use the exact values into the last step. So my va exact value for K is 1 fourth natural log of 64. Now to make this a little bit more useful to find C, I'm going to use some log properties. I'm going to bring the 1 fourth inside as an exponent. Remember the fractional exponent is the same as taking, in this case, the fractional exponent 1 fourth means the fourth root of 64. Now think about this, 64 raised to the power of 1 fourth 
is the same as eight squared raised to the power of one fourth. So let's use some properties of exponents. Multiply two times one fourth, I'll get one half. So eight to the one half is the same as radical eight. So the natural log of the fourth root of 64 is the same as the natural log of the square root of eight. So that's a very simple representation for k. You don't always have to do that. I'm doing that because I know one way I can find this value for c is to use this equation here, use the condition that there's a population of 400 after two hours. And now I see that really what I don't need necessarily is k, but 2k. And 2k would be two times the natural log of radical eight. But I can use a property of logs and bring the two inside and I'll have the natural log of radical eight squared. Well, radical eight squared is just eight and the natural log. So now I just get natural log of eight or 2k. Well, look what that means in my equation then. That means e to the 2k is going to be uh, what? It'll be e to the natural log of 8, but e to the natural log of 8 is just 8. So now I've got uh, a very simple equation. I just replace e to the 2k with 8. So I have 400 equals c times 8. And so c equals a nice round whole number 50. c equals 50. If I had used my calculator with this value of k, I would not get uh, 50 because this is just an approximation. I'd probably get you know 49.92 or 50.07. At any rate, I wouldn't get the exact value for C. So now I've got the exact value for C as a whole number. I also have a nice uh, expression for K as an exact value. So I'm going to use those values with my original formula. Now I have C equals 50, K equals natural log radical eight, and I can replace P of T with 50,000, because that's what I'm trying to find out here in part B, and solve this for T. And so I just uh, divide both sides by 50 to get the exponential part by itself. Now I'll write it as the equivalent log equation. And so I would have a uh, natural log of 1,000 equals the exponent up here, which is natural log of radical 8t, and solve this for t. And now at the very last step, I'll take out my calculator and find a decimal approximation. And I'm asked to round that to one decimal place. So that would just be 6.6. .6. So after six hours, I'm at 25,600. And then a little bit more than a half hour later, I have reached 50,000 for my population. How about instead of having a something that's growing, something that decays, like radioactive decay? So radioactive substances, uh, they decay. What that means is that they actually change into different elements as they lose some of their atomic particles. And so the amount of the original radioactive substance after t years is going to be the original amount or the initial amount times e to the kt. And k is still called a relative growth rate, even though it is a negative number. I guess we should probably call it a relative decay rate when it's negative. But anyway, we're going to still call it a growth rate. Now, an important quantity that you hear a lot with respect to radioactive substances is the idea of a half-life. And so you'd like that gives you an idea of how long does it take 
for half of the substance to decay. And the idea is that if a substance is highly toxic, a radioactive substance is highly toxic, uh, then if it takes a really long time for it to decay, it's going to be toxic for a long time. Of course, on the other hand, if you know the, the decay rate, it is constant. So this K is a constant. Uh, you know, this is what allows us to do uh, radioactive dating of different layers of the Earth to be able to determine how old that layer is. But anyway, the half-life, again, is a, the time needed for half of it to decay. In other words, if I, uh, after H years, you have exactly half of the original amount left. Now, we might want to write H in terms of K. So what's the connection between the half-life and the relative growth rate? Well, I can replace A of T with half of A naught and then solve for H. Well, first thing I'll do is divide both sides by A sub zero. That's a positive number, so I can divide both sides. And then I'll write the resulting equation in log form. So I'll have natural log of 1 half equals k times h, which says that h is natural log of 1 half over k, which is a fine way of representing it. Um, but I'm going to apply a property of logs where uh, if I take the reciprocal of the input to the log, I need to change the sign of the output and so h is then negative natural log of 2 over k. And this is a little bit cleaner. And it also makes sense to have this negative sign out in front. Uh, because k is negative, we want h to be positive. So I'll have a negative divided by a negative to make a positive. So now that we have the half-life, we have an expression, or we know the connection between the half-life and the relative growth rate, uh, it might make sense or it might be more useful to find a different equation, which is equivalent to the, this equation, uh, but with base two, because we're going to use half-life instead of our growth constant. Well, how do we go about that? Now, let's first remember basic property. So what's the connection between base e and base 2 for exponentials? Well, the number e can be written as 2 raised to the power of log base 2 of e. That just says that you know, the log and the exponential are inverses of each other. So if I take start with e, I take the log base 2, and then raise that, put that as the exponent with base 2, I'm just going to get e back again. So the exponent undoes the log. And now let's look at that exponent, log base 2 of e. I could use the change of base formula. That's the natural log of e over the natural log of 2, which is the same as 1 over the natural log of 2. And then let's take another look at this half-life formula. If I take the negative reciprocal of both sides of that formula, then I'll get k over the natural log of 2 is negative 1 to the h. And we'll see where that comes in in just a minute. Because now, if I look at e to the kt from our original formula, well, e, we said, is just 2 log base 2 to the power of e. But then we said log base 2 of e is 1 over the natural log of 2. So now I've got 2 raised to the power of 1 over the natural log of 2, all raised to the power of kt. So now I think you can see what we're going to do next, is that we can bring the k inside here, or multiply this out. And it would be k over the natural log of 2 times t. But we saw that k over the natural log of 2 
is negative 1 over h. So we would get 2 raised to the negative 1 over h times t, or I can just write that as negative t over h. So now our formula is the amount left is the initial amount times 2 raised to the power of negative t over h, where h is the half point. So let's work out an example. We've got some uh, tritium-3, a radioactive substance, and it decayed. We don't know what the original amount is, but we know that after one year, we're left with 94.5% of what we originally had. And from that information, we'd like to determine the half-life and the time needed for the sample to decay to 20% of its original amount. We will make use of the formula that we just derived. And so I know that after one year, so when t equals 1, I'm left with 94.5%, so 0.945 times the original amount. So A of 1, and now I'm going to write that as 0.945A0, that's going to be the original amount times 2 rates of the negative 1 over H power. And so um, What can I do? Well, I can divide out by the uh, the a sub zero, and now I'm going to write this new equation in log form. It'll be log base two, so log base two of zero point nine four five equals negative one over h. And so let me go ahead and use the change of base formula so I can get a decimal approximation. So negative 1 over h would be natural log of 0.945 over the natural log of 2. I'll take negative reciprocals of each side. So that'll give me positive h equals negative natural log of 2 top over the log of 0 0.945. Now I'll pull out my calculator. And I'll find that that equals about 12.25 years. So half of the sample will, will decay. No matter how much you start with, half of it will be gone after 12.25 years. So how much time is needed? So we're going to have to find t for the sample decay to 20%. So whatever's left is going to be 20%. Or 0 0.2 times the original amount. So I'm going to have to solve this equation for t. Now, again, I'm not going to put in my decimal approximation for h at this time. I'm going to work through this until I get to the very last part. And only then, so I may use this exact value for h, but only at the very end will I pull out my calculator. So again, I can divide both sides by a sub 0 or a naught. And I get 0 0.2 equals 2 to the power of negative th. Write that in log form. So negative t over h equals log base 2 of 0 0.2. And so t will be negative h times log base 2 of 0 0.2. I could just use this expression here, the blue expression, to find a value for h. But what I'm going to do instead is go to this way of writing, or this equation, and take negative reciprocals of this equation to get a value for negative h. So negative h then would be 1 over log base 2 of 0 0.94. And I'll put that in place of negative h. 
How does that help me? Well, now I have a ratio of logs. And so our change of base formula says that the ratio of two log expressions will be the same no matter what base you use. So log base two is not on my calculator, but natural log is. So now I can take out my calculator and find a decimal approximation to natural log of 0 0.2 divided by the natural log of 0 0.945. And that gives me about 28.45. That's correct to two decimal places. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to make another video where we talk about a different application called Newton's Law of Cooling.